My name is Vanessa Siddle-Walker. I am the Samuel Buchanan Ladaz Professor at Emory University. I've spent uh, 30 years writing about the segregated schooling of African-American children. And I'd like to take just a few minutes to share with you some of the implications of that work that I think are important for us to take on today. I mean, history is dead, right? When I think about history, could it really matter, especially Southern desegregation history? Uh, many people relegate it just to uh, dusty shelves. And we don't think about what implications the history of desegregation might have for how we think about education today. And I want to suggest to you that we have to think about the history of desegregation and we have to take on what it means for us today. Here's why. Black educators are the hidden figures in the story of school desegregation. The wide assumption is that they had nothing to offer. I mean, after all, desegregation was a way of rescuing Black children and delivering them into environments that would be better for them. So what would we have to learn and know about Black educators, right? So they were widely fired. People did not think about what they knew or brought to the table. I want to suggest to you that these were the people who actually paid the most for the cases, who envisioned what desegregation should be like. These were the ones who collaborated with the actors and made sure that we got a decision like Brown v. Board of Education and who thought the most about how we should implement that decision. So to think about desegregation requires us to bring these actors back to the table. And we have to ask the question, what is it that what is it they were trying to accomplish when they talked about integrating schools? And I am saying that these actors had an additive model for school desegregation. By this, I mean, they wanted everything they'd had in segregated schools that they'd been able to do, notwithstanding the poor treatment of school boards, and they wanted to be able to have what could be provided for them in integrated schools. So for them, integration would be an additive model. Now, what did they have? Black teachers had figured out how to teach. I write about this in their highest potential. They understood how to help children believe in a world that did not want them and how to provide the pedagogical expertise that would allow these children to accomplish and achieve. In other words, within schools and curriculum, they created aspiration. Aspiring climates, that's something these teachers knew how to do. The teachers knew something else too. They knew advocacy. So in addition to aspiring climates, they understood how to advocate for children using large national interconnected networks that also included local actors, grassroots actors, church leaders, lawyers, and others to advocate for the children to be sure that they would have what they needed in schools. So in an additive model, you would bring forth the aspirational understanding of how to create climates where children would believe they could achieve and you would bring forth the advocacy structures that would allow you to have watchdogs to make sure the children had what they needed. What did they want then? They wanted access. So they knew how to do aspiring climates, they knew how to advocate, and they wanted access to the materials, facilities, resources that had been previously denied. In an additive model, the children would have had all three. Uh, attention to climates that create aspiration, advocates, and access. But in real time, that's not what we did. In real time, what we did was an exchange model. Instead of maintaining wonderful climates and advocacy, they exchanged these for access. And it didn't work. The teachers were fired. Those who knew how to create these climates were fired, 50,000 or so by some estimates. The advocacy networks were sacrificed as the teacher organizations were fully integrated with agendas that were different from what they had had. And the access that they were given was never full, it was limited. So the question is, where are we now then with desegregation? 
if we've lost that understanding of how to create the schools, if we lost the advocacy and the access was then limited and now is even uh, retreating from the limited access they earlier had, what does that mean about how we go forward? I'm suggesting to you that it, we have to think deeply about what it means to go forward. We can't just do an agenda that pushes for access, putting children together without thinking about the climates in which they work. We can't create climates without having advocacy structures to make sure that equality stays in place. The history requires us, necessitates, that we think differently about how to implement quality schooling that will work for all children today.